Good morning, students. Welcome to the discussion of chapter number one, the Indian Constitution. Society has constitutive rule that make it and differentiate it from other kind of society. In large societies in which different communities of people live together, like our country, constitutive rules are formulated through consensus. And in modern countries, this consensus is available in written form, which we call constitution. So this is what it's about. Writing a constitution or having the set of rules is important. And the part of where I am saying about writing, it becomes more complex when it comes to the country like India. It is in society which have n number of communities and n number of people. Why does a country need constitution? All democratic countries are likely to have a constitution. But on the other hand, it is not necessary that all countries that have a constitution are democratic. The constitution serves several purposes as listed below. Constitution tell us what the fundamental nature of our society is. Our constitution helps serve as a set of rules and principles that all persons in a country can agree upon as the basis of the way in which they want the country to be governed. Significant reasons why we need a constitution. In democratic societies, the constitution often lays down rules that guard against the misuse of authority by our political leaders. The constitution ensures that a dominant group does not use its power against less powerful people or group. This is something which is also there in chapter number two, understanding secularism. The constitution helps to protect us against the decisions that could have an adverse effect on the larger principles that the country believes in. The Indian constitution, key features, a group of 300 people become member of constituent assembly in 1946 and had written India's constitution while writing the constitution these members kept in mind that different communities who speak different languages belong to different religions and religion and have distinct culture so what basically it's saying that while framing the constitution it was kept in mind in the of the people that in our country, there are several communities who speak different languages and have different customs and cultures to adhere and to follow. So, federalism. That this refers to the existing exist, existence of more than one level of government in the country. In India, we have governments at the state level, at the center, and at the Panchayati Raj in the village. So this are, these are the levels of the government, right? That there in villages there are Panchayats, and then there is state government, then there is a center, central government. The constitution contains list that details the issue that each tier of the government can make law. In addition, the constitution also specify where each tier of government can get the money from for the work that it does. All the persons in India are governed by law and policies made, made by each of these levels of government. Federalism basically is the segregation of the government on each and every level. Parliamentary form of government. The people of India have a direct role in electing their representatives. Also, every citizen of the country, irrespective of his or her social background, can contest in election. This means that anyone who feels like standing up in the election as a candidate, they can do so. Separation of powers. There are three organs of the government. The legislature, which refers to the elected representative by the people. The executive is a smaller group of people who are responsible for implementing law and running the government. And then the judiciary which refers to the system of court in India. Each organ mentioned above act as a check on the other organ. This ensures the balance of power between all the three. 
fundamental rights again it is the implicit and integral part of our constitution which guarantees the right of individual against the state as well as against other individuals it also guarantees the right of minorities against the majority the fundamental rights in the indian constitution include right to equality right to freedom right against exploitation right to freedom of religion cultural and educational right and right to constitutional remedies fundamental right have two fold objective every citizen must be in the position to claim fundamental right fundamental rights must be binding upon every authority that has got the power to make laws the constitution also has section called directive principle of state policy which ensure greater social and economic reform and serve as a guide to the independent indian state to institute laws and policies basically these fundamental rights are extremely important for the citizen of the country as they lay out the basic functions or the right to express themselves along with the and other rights like freedom constitutional remedies of their cultural and education and etc because these fundamental rights ensure the liberty i can say the free way to live of a person this is ex extremely important part of our society having a fundamental right shows that how liber how liberating the government is how it is treating its people and how the government policy is going on in an any country last one that is secularism a secular state is one in which the state does not officially promote any one religion as the state religion about this we will discuss it in the chapter number 2 understanding secularism and for your information our country india is an secular nation this means that it does not have any official religion to promote 